Hi there, my name is Josh and thanks for joining me today. I want to make a brief introduction to motherboards before we really get into the details and just kind of give an overview of a motherboard and all the components that are on it. Every computer has a motherboard and that motherboard usually has the chipset which is going to determine a lot of other things on your computer. So there are some basic functions that have existed on nearly every motherboard for the past ever. These include, but are not limited to the following. To start, we have the chipset. This in modern forms might be called the platform controller hub as dubbed by Intel. This can be thought of as a handler to handle communications between high speed devices such as your CPU, RAM, and PCI Express, all of which are clocked really fast and kind of exist in their own environment, you could think of it. And then the chipset is the kind of the negotiator to handle signals coming from your SATA, your USB, your audio, your ethernet. Maybe you have legacy connections like PS2 for your mouse and keyboard. So it's gonna take all that lower speed stuff and act as a in-between between your CPU and your RAM um, basically one chip is managing all these functions and that is a chipset. A chipset is going to also going to determine what processors and what RAM and what stuff you use within your motherboard. One thing that the chipset does is it handles communications, the initial communications between your BIOS or the EOFI system. This is a basic system. It has its own chip on the board. It's connected to the chipset and this chip handles all of the basic talking to the devices. So Windows 10 might want to talk to your USB devices. It needs a uh, translator, basically, to translate, you know, copy file to send bit one, send bit two, send bit one, and so forth. This is the underlying application that kind of handles all that connections in the computer. Another overlooked component that not a lot of people talk about, but I believe is important, is the VRM and basically the general power routing of your motherboard. Every motherboard is gonna have like a 24 pin connector and then like a four or eight pin 12 volt CPU connector. And that's how power gets to the board. It generally comes in 12 volt, five volt and 3.3 volt. There are lots of electrical components that serve to either split up, to filter, to regulate this power into a stable source for sensitive components such as RAM and CPU. So the CPU cannot deal with a voltage spike of 3 to 3.5 without freaking out. It has to have some sort of program, some sort of chip dedicated to regulating it and providing it a consistent voltage. And this is done with a collection of components. First you have the voltage regulator module. This is a chip in and of itself. It controls how power is going to be delivered to your CPU and it has its own capacitors, transistors, and what's called a choke, and that whole system is going to regulate power to your CPU. There's a separate system for RAM. There is also a separate system for your chipset. So next we have the real-time clock. This contains a IC chip, integrated circuit chip. It contains a quartz crystal, and it contains a battery. This allows your system to consistently record and keep track of the time. This also keeps settings for the BIOS UFI system and if you are ever overclocking your system and you need to save those settings this is the circuit that keeps those settings saved so you can use them next time this can also be used for diagnosing troubleshooting a, a computer if you take out the battery and put it back in it resets those settings obviously removable storage slots hard drives and storage have always gotten their own connectors and that's been like from ide to sata to PCI Express, and now in it's, it's in that M.2 interface that we typically see on boards now. Just know that there is always a thing for storage. RAM, these are very distinct. They always have the same like long shape, and this is where you put your RAM sticks. Audio, this is more of a recent thing, and by recent, I mean like 20 years, but it's still a thing. The audio on your motherboard is separated, typically from other components to protect it from interference. If it is near components like the CPU or the RAM, it will pick up a lot of that electrical noise and stuff will just sound bad. So you'll usually find it located in the bottom left of the board. Ethernet and network. This is how your device talks to the outside world. This could be expressed as a wireless LAN chip. It could be expressed as a LAN chip. And the LAN chip is usually its own thing. It has to deal with a 
regulating a different kind of clock cycle than the rest of your computer, so it has buffers and stuff. It's its own integrated circuit, and you can usually find it near your RJ45 jack. Another thing is the Ethernet. This is where you plug in the internet. This might be expressed as a wireless card as well. Just know that it will have its own separate chip. This is due to specialized network functions, and it wouldn't be a great idea to integrate that onto a lot of other packages or the chipset itself. So it's its own chip. You can usually find it near the Ethernet port on the back of your computer, near the rear I.O. So the rear I.O. is also my next thing. It, every computer has this place where you just plug in stuff, and it's right on the board. It's right there. So you here you'll find your USB ports. If you have integrated graphics, it'll be HDMI, VGA, or Display Port. There will be, you know, of course, the audio jacks, and then the internet jack will also be there. And if your chip supports PS2, which is a very older legacy connector, you'll find it on there as well. Now, there are some other new ones coming out, such as USB-C and USB 3.1. Now, there are pinouts for other I.O., such as if you have a front panel audio, if you have USB on the outside of your case, or if you have a power button, which chances are you probably do. Now, there are pinouts, usually on the bottom part of the board, that will connect to devices that are meant to be, you know, kind of a hub for that stuff as well. A big component is going to be PCI Express. PCI Express is where you put your graphics card. It's where you put your network cards. It's where you put any kind of storage controllers or any other expansion cards into your motherboard. It will usually fit in here. This is, PCI Express is really fast and it can handle a lot of things. And the last part, but certainly not the least, is your CPU socket. This is very manufacturer independent. By that, I mean Intel or AMD. Uh, it's going to determine the types of processors you can put in there, along with your chipset and along with the general construction of the board. It usually has its own holes or a bracket for a heat sink to kind of screw into the motherboard or it supports a fact plate. The idea is that cooling is also given some thought here. So these are the basic core functions that you'll find on any motherboard for the past 30 years, basically. Definitely worth it to keep an eye out. And if you're looking for something particular, definitely look into that. So if you have like an Intel Core i9, you need a good VRM to power that. If you have a PCI Express Gen 4 ready card, find a board with a PCI Express Gen 4. It's important to know these features when you're dealing with other parts because it's always a compatibility thing. If we're honest, it's compatibility. It's got to be compatible with your case, your RAM, your CPU, your hard drive. All of that has to fit in and work with your system. So I hope this video helped explain what a motherboard is. And I don't want you to look at it and think, wow, there's so much stuff going on there. I want you to easily be able to look at one of these and be able to understand this is a RAM, this is a power, this is a CPU socket. This is the VRM up here. This is PCI Express. This is a storage slot here. This is... USB, this is front panel audio down here, this is SATA ports, this is, uh, this should be simple to look at for you. So for a motherboard, instead of thinking it as just one board, which it is, think of it as the separate components that make up this board. You can think of it as your chipset, you can think of it as your RAM and your RAM slots and your socket and your PCI Express slot. So all of these different components, all magically melded on one board make up the motherboard i hope that was a good introduction for you guys i hope you learned something and i want you to be able to see these as a lot more simpler and not terrifyingly complex full of all these different components just break it down and take it a piece at a time try to look at oh what's going on here why why is all these here and look at different motherboards and you'll definitely see some patterns as well so thanks for watching and have a good day